All right, so if you're learning web development, if you know HTML, CSS, or you're learning those, the next step for you is going to be to learn jQuery. jQuery is the easiest and most popular JavaScript library. So if you want to start learning JavaScript, learn jQuery. Every employer I've ever worked for uses jQuery, no matter how big or how small they were. So it's very popular. There are companies that don't use it, but most of them do. So. Here's how you add jQuery on your page. You download it from jQuery.com, put it in your project folder, um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to just add a script tag, and you'll add the source to it. So in this case, it's in a Bower Components folder, a jQuery folder inside of there, and then there's my file, jQuery.js. So when I put that on my page, nothing changes because jQuery doesn't actually do anything. It gives you a library of commands that you can use to do things. So it's on the page now, and I'm going to go add my own script tag, and inside of it, I'm going to write my own JavaScript. Uh, so what you're going to have to remember to start jQuery is one thing, uh, and this is the memorization part for you. Once you get through this, you get to actually have tons of fun with jQuery. So here we go. It's document. Before I mention that, this dollar sign is the, the value that's given to the jQuery library when it loads up. So anytime you, you want to reference jQuery, you hit dollar. Um, so we go document, and then we go dot ready, and you just got to memorize this. You'll later on understand what it's about, and then you do this function thing. Function, open and close parentheses, uh, open and close curly braces, and then close your first parenthesis. Honestly, what I did when I started off is I copied and pasted this and saved it somewhere, because it just didn't make sense to me, and you don't want to have to think about it. Just paste this in. Your jQuery code always goes inside of a document ready function. You can have multiple document ready functions. There's really no need to if you just have a few lines of code, but they're not going to conflict. What this does is this says, hey, wait for my whole document to load up before I try running any JavaScript. Otherwise, you're going to try to talk to panel one with JavaScript, and panel one hasn't loaded yet. So the JavaScript's going to run. It's not going to find panel one, it won't do anything and then panel one will load and it's not going to do what you're expecting it to do and you probably won't even get any errors about it it just says nothing happens so the document ready function says hey wait for my document to fully load then let's start running stuff so your jQuery goes in here there's also a short way of doing it and that's just dollar function so that's what I use that's what most people use but you can do document ready function they're the same thing so now that we've done that, and now that I've probably confused you from the start, that's the only complicated part. The rest of it's let's just have fun. You're going to go dollar command and open your parentheses, and then you have two parts to each jQuery action. You have the selector, which works just like CSS. You see over here I showed you what they are. So there's panel one, and that's because it's ID one, exactly as if you were doing ID is panel one, just like if you were doing CSS. Um, so I've selected it. You can use single quotes or you can use double quotes. Oh, don't know what Sublime's doing to me there. You can use double quotes. Either one work. And then you give it dot and give it your method. So in this case, I'm going to go hide. And I'm going to hit save. It's going to reload for me. So there you go. It loads up the page and then it hides panel one. I can tell it to hide 300, which will hide over the course of 300 milliseconds. You'll see it kind of does a little animation there for me. And then it's chainable. jQuery is awesome in that you can keep chaining it as long as it's not the semicolon yet. So I can hide it and then I can show it over the course of one second. So it hides fast and then it shows slowly. And you can just keep going. You can do hide, show, hide, show. There you go. Hide, show, hide, show. It's fun. jQuery is tons of fun. Another thing you can do is slide up. And just as you'd expect, it slides up and then it hides. And then you can have it slide down. Up, and then back down. You can also add a delay in there, dot delay. So we're going to delay for one second, which is 1,000 milliseconds. Eh, wait a little bit, and then we'll do it again. jQuery, it's fun. This is super awesome. So I can have it slide up, delay. You can do fade in, fade out. There it goes, and gone. And then it's going to slide down. Um, another thing you can do is you can do fade toggle. You can do toggle for pretty much anything. So if I do fade toggle twice, then it'll fade out since it's currently in. And then it'll fade in because it's currently out. Toggle will, well, it'll toggle. You can slide toggle. 
it's going to slide up, and it's going to slide back down, and then you can just do toggle if you just want it to do a hide, a show hide. So that's kind of the showing and hiding parts of uh, jQuery. Super, super fun. You can go .css. This is where it gets a little bit more tricky. And then you give it a pair of curly braces, which are options. And I'm actually, you can go color, red. And then, oh, red is not defined. You have to do it in uh, quotes. Sorry about that. There you go. And now my color became red. Uh, this one has something else overriding it. But there you go. The panel one gets a color of red. And then I can do a comma here. And I can go font weight. The one thing you can't do, I'll show you in a second, font weight bold. There we go. Font weight bold. The one thing you can't do is you can't do font dash weight because in JavaScript, this means font minus weight, which it looks for math and doesn't make sense and will throw an error. Ah, that doesn't make sense. Uh, what you can do is you can wrap that in quotes if you want to do it that way, single or double quotes, and that works. Or jQuery is smart enough to where you can go font weight. So there you go. I can change the CSS. Um, and it's a little confusing. This is kind of a cleaner way of doing it. We're making what's called a JavaScript object, if you want to Google that. So anytime you do curly braces in JavaScript, it's making an object, unless you have function before it, which is really, that's for a JavaScript lesson. So now I can go color, red, and add a comma, font weight bold. Now it's starting to feel a little bit more like CSS. And I can go display none. And just in case I didn't want to see it anymore, <laughs> which is basically what a jQuery show hide does. So there we go, panel one. Uh, so let's make panel one hide. And then let's make panel two CSS opacity 0.5. So now when I boot up, that's gone and that's halfway hidden. And at, from this point, we'll call this a lesson. And what will the next step will be in the next lesson is to listen to events. The real fun of JavaScript happens when you start interacting with what the user does. Those are called JavaScript events. When they click, do this. When they hover, do this. Um, and when they mouse up, do that. So that's really where jQuery gets even more fun. We'll stop right here so you can watch it over if I've done too much too fast. If you've kept up with a pretty fast pace here, let's go on to lesson number two.